Hello and welcome, T Furians. This is Chris from tfury.com doing a tutorial on how to make Photoshop halftones. Alright, before we get started, uh, I wanted to show these files here. Uh, I'm going to open them up in Photoshop. And they'll show the beginning and end result of what you'll have before you start this tutorial and hopefully what you have at the end. Uh, this piece is by Megan Lara. And it looks great. Uh, take a look at this first one. And you'll see that a lot of these strokes are going to be very painterly and with opacity changes and glows. And it looks beautiful, but it won't be able to be printed. Uh, the second one here is prepped and ready for screen printing. If you look close, you can see all the dots, and that is what's going to allow us to be able to print it onto a t-shirt. And they looked very different here, but from a distance, they'll be very comparable. All right, let me close those up. And I'm going to open up the file that we're going to be working on. Here it is. And what's going to be important is that you have all the colors uh, separated onto different layers. It's important that you're going to be working at size and at a resolution that can be printed, so at least 300 dpi. And take a look at all these layers. They're all their own colors. And we're going to turn that off for a second here. Take a look at all just the half tones, or just what needs to be turned into half tones. And these are the layers that have uh, strokes that are going to be semi-transparent or have glows in them. And let's choose a layer that we can see this illustrated most easily at. And let's go with this uh, one called Dark. And I'm going to turn off everything else so you can see it. And you can see that its opacity is, uh, is about, about half. I want to duplicate this image so we don't have to mess with this original. Okay, now take this and we we'll want to go into Image and Hue Saturation and take the lightness out of it. This is so we can see this, and when we turn it into a bitmap, it'll be better readable. All right, go into Mode and Grayscale, and Merge, that's fine, or don't merge, that's it's really not important at this moment. When turn it into a bitmap, press OK, and here's where you have some options. You want to keep it at a high uh, output, uh, halftone screen. The method, can be 50% threshold if you're working on flat tones, so nothing with gradients. And our frequency is going to be at 55. The larger the number, the smaller the dot. The angle can be anything you choose, uh, 30, 45, 60. You're going to get different results. You can kind of experiment with uh, how different it's going to look. The close up on this, you can see that it's either black or white, just made up of dots. I'm going to bring that back into where it came from, so it's going to be back in a grayscale. The size ratio is OK and back into RGB color. All right, looks good. And then double click this and to make it a new layer. Go into channels and click on this circle of dots and that's going to select everything that's white. And clear that or backspace on your keyboard. You want to select all, then copy it. Go back into your original file and paste in place. The shortcut key for that is Command Shift V. Put that right over the painted layer, and you can kind of see how it compares. I'm going to label this dark half tone. Right now, the uh, dots are still black, and what we need to do is turn them into the color that the uh, original layer was in. And since we have these flats, we can sample from this without having to worry about how it's going to sample with the eyedropper um, that's, that has a semi-transparency. So I'm going to turn that off so you can't see it, but I'm going to apply a layer style and sample that flat tone. And when we turn the visibility back on, you'll see that it's the color that it was originally painted at. And you can kind of see with these layers turned on and off how that looks. Now we have something that's made out of dots instead of brush strokes. And then uh, let's take another look at another layer here and try a different method for the half toning. Try the one for gold. And now I'm going to step back just to where we had all the colors still. 
Press Command Option Z, that's Control Alt Z in a PC. Here we have all the colors again. And what we're going to do is to isolate just the gold this time. Take the lightness down. Control Shift U for hue saturation. Change into grayscale, and then change into bitmap. And then right here we can try something new. We're going to go with the shape as line. And then take a close look and you'll see that these tones are going to be all made up of lines instead of dots. Bring it back into grayscale, bring it back into RGB. Double click that, make it a layer. Click the circle of dots and clear that. All right, select all, copy everything, control C and paste it in. Oh, paste in place, control shift V, command shift V on the Mac. Label that gold line halftone. You'll kind of see the difference between the, uh, the one that was labeled dark and this gold here. And it's still black again, like the other one. We'll change it to gold by sampling that color underneath it. Press OK. And now we can kind of see the options that you have when you're creating a halftone. It depends on your preference whether you want to make it a line halftone or dot halftone. And here we have the painted layer, and here we have the line work layer. You'll have to do the same thing for each layer. Here we have one, two, three, four, five layers to get it ready for print. And this uh, right here is the finished file. And this is uh, what it'll look like uh, when it goes to the site. And the final file is what we'll send to the printers to get your fabulous shirts. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave it in the comments below. And that's the magic that goes into creating halftones for t-shirts. Thanks very much. Expelliarmus.